be one of the scariest things last week or the last couple of days that we heard is that uh, yeah, Social Security payments might not be exactly what they're supposed to be. And Melissa Seaford is here from AARP's. Uh, she's the Associate State Director for Economic Security. Is there such a thing as economic security these days? Yes, yes. Is there? You know, as long as Social Security has been around for the past 70 years, it's never been delinquent on a payment. So um, we're really hoping that that stays true um, in this hard time that we're going through with the government shutdown and the debt ceiling debate going on. And, you know, I'm typically here talking about Social Security is always on the chopping block for yeah. all of these, you know, debates on on raising the debt ceiling and, and cause our, having a solution to the um, the debt. So it's, it's nice to be here in a different format today. So I'm excited. You know, when, you, when we often uh, think of Social Security, we think of it as uh, a payment. Mm -hmm. But you say at AARP that you've done studies and it's an economic driver. Yes, we're really excited. So um, I actually took a new position with AARP. You did. I'm with Government Affairs now. Uh -huh. So I am uh, lobbying for AARP here in Michigan. Um, and I say that because October 1st, we were actually in D.C. for the first day of the government shutdown, oh boy. Um, meeting with our members of Congress and, and giving them this report that AARP just came out with. And like I said before, we're always here talking about the beneficiaries of Social Security, but I'm here today to talk about the impact that Social Security has on our local economies. Explain that to me. How sure. does it do that and, and yeah. how significant is it? Yes. So um, in 2012, which is where the data from this, store or this um, article was taken, um, $3.1 billion was paid in Social Security benefits. What we found through this report is that Social Security actually has a multiplying effect of almost two. Um, so we're looking at about $55 um, billion put back in the Michigan economy due to Social Security beneficiaries. These people that are receiving Social Security are not the ones that are going to Hawaii or Puerto Rico like you get to do, but um, are spending their money locally at grocery stores, retail shops, um, buying real estate. Um, and what we're seeing is that the impact that these Social Security beneficiaries have shopping at these local places, um, they're able to pay their employees a salary, and then the employees then go back and put money back into the economy. So that's where that multiplying factor comes in. Well, I'm going to show you my Meyer card. You're going to see okay. that. <laughs> I make 7,000 visits a day to the one in Bath over there. Okay. So I am, a, I am I doing you. some. And Dusty Cellar, too. I have an yes. economic impact on that that's, place. That's good. Sure. I think I do, too. And uh, my <laughs> a Firekeeper's account, too, at the casino yeah. there. But, but uh, the point of it is, too, I guess, is, does this oversimplify it to say that when people get a Social Security check, it's not like they're saving it in a savings account Correct. they're spending it and turning it around quickly yeah i mean nationwide social security keeps 22 million people out of poverty and that's a huge deal and so mm. they're spending things that they need necessities food shelter um you know a lot of things i didn't talk about before was also local hospitals uh -huh. you know that health care costs as well so i mean they're really putting money back into the economy and we never talk about that so when we talk about things like the debt ceiling we talk about ways to um help out uh, our national debt social security should not be an option because if we do cut social security we're going to be cutting what's happening to our local economy as well when you go to the uh, michigan delegation the mm -hmm. members of congress mm -hmm. uh, to, to talk with them yeah uh what's it like did you get special attention from them do they sit up and listen closely because your members vote. Yeah, I mean, by by a huge percentage, mm -hmm. right? Well, we always say that we don't have a political action committee due to our status, but we do have members that vote, mm -hmm. and I think, to, statistically speaking, about seventy percent of our members vote. Yeah. Um, Find so, me another category where you can get seventy percent right. of the people that vote. Exactly. Exactly. So you know, we do. I'm not gonna say we get special attention. They treat everybody equally. You know, they have an open door policy at all the offices. We were just honored that so many people, even though that they weren't getting paid that day, were in to meet with us. So we really uh, respect all the staff members that took time out of their day to to listen to our story, to hear the economic impact that Social Security has. So we were very honored. And how, how much time do you typically get? Let's say you go into Mike Rogers' office. Mm -hmm. Does he come out and sit with you, or does he bring you in? And how long does he give you? Well, unfortunately, they were a little busy that day, so we met yeah. with a lot of staff members. Yeah. But they gave us about, you know, 25 to 30 minutes each. We also did some stop bys at members that we didn't have a chance to set up appointments, and they mm -hmm. also gave us a good amount of time to discuss the issues that we have with Social Security and Jane CPI. So you get a good welcome because a lot of people mm -hmm. listening have no idea how that works. They don't realize that you can literally just walk into the Capitol building, right, mm -hmm. and drop by your uh, congressman's office. Or well, one. you're more than welcome to do that, but I would recommend that you contact their local office first because you can probably find out what their schedule looks like. Mm -hmm. and I think they appreciate a little heads up. I know that when I worked over at the Capitol, 
um, here locally, it was always nice to get a little heads up when people were coming into town so you can prepare. Yeah. But they are accessible is absolutely. what I'm saying. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, they didn't have capital tours when we were there, and there was a lot of things that were shut down. You had to wait in line for like an hour to get into the Capitol building yeah. and all the other um, offices. But all in all, very, very accessible. Well, here's to Social Security. $55 billion in economic activity it uh, generates and supporting 381,000 jobs in the state of Michigan. Great to see you this morning. Your Burberry cologne is very nice. <laughs> well, thank Perfume, you. sorry. Thank you. No, you're fine. I'm sure it is cologne. Well received really, in the you. office. Okay, <laughs> 42 after the hour.